Today is May 25th of 2024, and 18 days ago, Greylog 6 was released, followed by some minor bug fixes in 6.01 and 6.02, which only came out a few days ago. You'll find the full change log down below. I want to talk about today why Greylog is still my favorite open source logging tool and I continue to use it and that yes, Greylog 6 was a pretty pain-free transition if you're already running Greylog 5. They give it a facelift, but they did not change things so much that you are in unfamiliar territory. So we're going to take a look at Greylog 6 and talk about my previous tutorial, which too long didn't watch. Yes, it works as long as you are not just following along that tutorial, but following the instruction tutorial of pulling down the latest Docker Compose from my GitHub, because I have updated it now to not install Greylog 5, but to install Greylog 6. So you'll find my previous getting started with Greylog video down below, and outside of the interface color changes, they still work the same. So let's get started in talking about Greylog 6. <music> Now, I want to start out and be clear that I am not sponsored by Greylog or any affiliation for this particular video, but I have been on their podcast and they have sent me some shirts. So, hey, thanks team over at Greylog. Greylog is a couple different products. Essentially, it starts with Greylog Open, and that's what I'll be talking about today, which is the free and open source version of Greylog, which is specifically for logging. Then they have add-ons such as your Greylog Enterprise and Greylog Security that kind of gives you more enhanced detections if you're interested in doing those things. They also have several free tools. They have a cloud management system. But as I said, we're being talking about the free Greylog open specifically for this video. And as I said, Greylog version 6. You'll find a link to this down below, but this is the full change log for all of the details in here. There are a lot of changes that affect very specifically some of the other Greylog enterprise features that are part of their API and security management tools. We're going to talk about just, as I said, the Greylog open, but of course this is linked so you can go through and see all of the release notes, all of the changes that have occurred. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you log into Greylog 6 is a much updated color scheme. I think this is all for the better. It adds better visibility when looking at it, but it's not that much functionally different. We do have a couple new buttons here at the top to offer their security overview. This is a demo, by the way, that it displays right here because this is a paid add-on. And as I said, we're going to keep this in scope of just the free system. And of course, they still have their enterprise option here. Right there, you can go right to and request if you're interested in purchasing those. Now, going over to the changes and the ones that are a little bit bigger here in Greylog 6 Open is when we're looking at the index sets, we can go over here to the different indexes that we have, such as this one. And if we edit the index set, we have the default legacy options of setting your rotation strategy, but you also have the data retention option of just setting the days that you want, min days storage and max days in storage before going ahead and purging this. So this is a little bit different because you aren't setting it by size like I was in some of my previous videos, but your settings from Greylog 5 to Greylog 6 when you do the upgrade will transfer over. Now, something else they've added here is under alerts. We're going to go ahead and create a new alert notification. The notification options here are the same with Slack, Microsoft Teams, and email, HTTP, but also now we have custom HTTP, which adds a lot of extended options. So you can do a more advanced and more in-depth sending, including different types of JSON, application, and text plane options. This can be really handy, and I do like that they have a skip TLS verification option. This can allow you, especially if you're trying to build webhooks for internal systems, to be able to get that data over from a triggered event inside of Greylog to some maybe local server that you have to get that data passed over. Now, there have been some changes to the way information is displayed, especially the stacking that they do here just looks a lot nicer and a lot cleaner than it did previously. All the other functionality is still there so we can drill down, but being able to see where these logs are coming from and drilling down the correlation data between them is I think a little bit cleaner in the way they display it here. I also like the way this search works a little bit different with the undo and redo buttons. And you still have your history here. So I can sort things by maybe a specific IP that I'm looking for, like this one here. We'll go ahead and do a quick query on it. And we see that this IP has been attacking me over this period of time. Let's go back and actually start with how I found this, which was classification miscellaneous attack, which is being dumped from my firewall from Sericata. And let's actually extend this all the way to 30 days. So we can see the different attacks that are happening. Then we can go here and drill down in one of these. And if we want to look, for example, let's look at this particular IP and we're going to go ahead and add it to the query. And we can see what days it chooses to do this attack. That's Terracotta flags. Then from there, we can just 
undo because maybe we want to see other attacks from different ones on here. I really like the simplicity of this, the undo, or maybe let's look at that again and hit redo. It's a minor thing, but it does make a pretty big difference. They also have all the other features here to allow this to be added to the dashboard, but they also have a simple duplicate option. So if you're wanting to build out your message count or any other of the visual displays to represent data, you can simply duplicate it and then start modifying each one of those to create the widget. So we have message count here, message count here, but maybe we want to modify this message count and have the other one display things in a slightly different way, or maybe how we want the intervals to look on each of these. So we'll update the widget, and now we've created two different views here. And of course, we can stretch this one all the way across and stack them on top of each other just like that. So now we have two different message count views. This is the copy one, and of course, you can keep editing this, and then when you're done, save it. Now, one of the things I want to talk about here is the difference between the production Docker config that I'm using versus the one on my GitHub. I mentioned this in a tutorial when setting up Graylog that you can store the logs elsewhere. That is preferred, especially when you want to keep the virtual machine or even the machine that it's on a little bit smaller. This makes it a little bit simpler for management. Now I have this mounted just as a standard NFS mount. This is where the confusion sometimes may come in is I'm having the operating system handle the NFS mount. So you just add this to your Etsy FS tab. There's plenty of documentation on how to get a mount set up inside of Linux. And this does mount a TrueNAS server that I have. And well, there's an entire playlist of TrueNAS that you'll find on my channel as well. That being said, let me show you the functional differences in the Docker Compose file. Now, this is a Docker Compose file from my GitHub. You notice we have the Mongo data, log data, Graylog data. Graylog and Mongo data are really small. Those are just the configurations for Graylog. But the log data, obviously, is going to vary greatly depending on how many logs and what your retention settings are in Graylog. And that can get easily into terabytes when you have a lot of different systems that are logging. In my production system, you'll notice that there is not this log data. We just have the Mongo data and the Graylog data. What you do is you go down here to open search and you look down here at volumes, you see it's mount slash gray log underscore logs, user share, open search data. Now let's compare that to the version that is in the Docker config. It is just log data, the volume that was defined so it can be stored locally and then user share open data. Wherever your mount is, and mine is simply mount slash gray log underscore logs, it just say colon and this for the volume. Now, please note, I very clearly said it was done by the operating system. Yes, there are ways Docker can talk to NFS. I did not go that route. I found it simpler just to have the OS handle the mount. Do make sure that you have proper permissions so that the data is writable by Docker in here prior to setting this up, or it'll give you a bunch of errors. Now, there actually are a lot more changes I didn't cover in Graylog 6, but as I said in the beginning, I'm keeping this narrowed in scope to Graylog Open, the open source and free version. Those changes are significant to the paid enhanced add-ons that are offered from Graylog. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Graylog or having the full installed tutorial, as I said, my tutorial that is for Graylog 5 still works for Graylog 6, provided you download the latest version of my Docker Compose file from GitHub. It's already been updated, so you can still follow along the tutorial, and outside of the color changes in the interface, it still will work just fine. I've also added a video on how to set this up in Windows. You'll find that link down below, along with an entire discussion on how threat detection in Windows works and how to pull all that data and event log data and the conversion of it into your gray log. This is actually really cool if you want to dive deep into logging. It is uh, really handy to have all your systems putting all the logs in one place to figure out problems that aren't just related to one system, but correlate them across all of your systems. Like and subscribe to see more content from this channel. Check out the swag store and including some of the new shirts that we have available there. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion on this and other topics. And I will see everyone on whatever socials you want to connect with me on or in the next video. You'll find all that over at lawrencesystems.com along with links to my newsletter and whatever else I got going on there. All right, and thanks.